The more I looked into West Point, the more I looked into the military academy, the more I found out that it had tremendous opportunity. It was just a tremendous education program, tremendous institution, tremendous history. In any other school that I was being recruited to or any other school that I was looking at, they were all great schools, great programs. But only West Point gave me the opportunity to be part of something bigger than myself and to serve my country. So I played offensive line. I was small, I was short, I was not heavy. I was the lightest on both sides of the ball. But I always prided myself on being tough. If I remember back my freshman year in college, I was totally unprepared for the level of intensity that some of these kids were playing at. But I had to learn, I had to learn fast. Playing around those kids who had an intensity to a level that I had never experienced before really made me a better player. Motivated me, inspired me to play to a level that I had never before thought I was capable of. It is the ethos of you wanting to succeed, you want to win, you, want to, you don't want to win at all costs, but you want to win and win the right way. It's the ethos of the United States military. When the United States of America puts the military in harm's way, they don't expect their military to go out there and look good. They don't expect their military to go out there and, and do its best. They expect the military to go out there and win. In the end, I stayed 43 years. I was the last one of my entire West Point class to stay in uniform. Out of 850, almost 900 of us who graduated, I was the last one to stay in. The beautiful thing about team sports is that you're not just playing for yourself, you're playing for your team. You're playing for your teammates on the left and right. And the last thing you ever want to do is to let your teammate down. When I went to Afghanistan for the first time, there were not a lot of forces on the ground back then. We were the only conventional force. I was the chief of staff, a colonel, working for a two-star general. That was Operation Anaconda in that time frame. We had responsibility for the whole uh, country. You know, I was focused on developing the plans and commanding and controlling the plans that were necessary. Frankly, I, you know, what I learned here at West Point, when I learned about playing Division I football, developed me and gave me the skill sets, I think, that really helped me to bear under those, those level of responsibilities. To deal with pressure, to deal with success, to deal with failure, to deal with building teams, to deal with failure of subordinates and lifting them up and edifying them, to bring them back into the fight, to deal with loss. One of those kids who I thought it was one of the most talented, incredibly young man, was assigned to my division. And I always keep an eye on him to see how he was doing. And he was in a very tough place. I went and visited him and he got his combat infantryman badge I awarded him. And then about a week and a half later, he was killed in combat. Um, and that one really hurt. Even to this day, it hurts. I, so I wear his bracelet. So I've been, so he died in 2009, but I've got his bracelet right here, Dan Hyde. And uh, because I always want to remember, I never want to forget the sacrifice of these incredible men and women for our country. The toughness and the mental and physical toughness that I learned playing intercollegiate sports really helped me in this position of, of junior and senior levels of responsibility in tough circumstances, more than I ever realized. I'm humbled to be able to have had an influence on people's lives. That's the beautiful thing of leadership is because if you're gonna lead somebody, you're gonna have an influence on them. You have the opportunity to influence them and being in the military, you're gonna be in leadership all the time. But I think if I reflect back now, on my 43 years in the military and the leadership that was provided while I was in the military. The thing that I reflect that gives me the greatest satisfaction is the legacy of young men and women who have developed the attributes so that they themselves can be great leaders and that they themselves will have those attributes to be effective and accomplish the missions and to perform the work that they're responsible for with excellence.